If you are thinking of a bank that takes care of customers' needs by providing quality services with flexibility, reliability, and innovation, think Trust Bank Limited. With Trust Bank Limited Mobile Banking, you enjoy services such as balance inquiry, mini statement, funds transfer between accounts, exchange rates, mobile airtime top up, stop ATM card, checkbook request, and pin change. Our real time gross settlement allows the customer to instruct the bank to transfer funds from their account to another account at another bank. Our expertise and experience in international banking is both legendary and the envy of the market. Retail banking, one bank, different amazing packages. Whether you are interested in savings account, current account, time or fixed deposit account, lending or overdraft, our team of dedicated staff is always ready and willing to help you out with your transactions as you wish. Corporate Banking Trust Bank Limited offer the most convenient services for deposit accounts, credit facilities, trade finance, bond and guarantee and foreign currency account. With e-banking, you can make electronic bill payments and online banking and enjoy 24-hour access to your cash with our ATM. With the largest network of branches and agents, we give you the convenience to receive funds as you please. Trust Bank Limited, proudly Gambian. Fay lempo warugal la si kepo ko hamne domi reo minga ak nyufi deke. Bo feke ne chi atmi sa kom kom wesu na nyar fuka ak nyenti junei dalasi. Mbete wer buneka dinga amluto lu si nyari junei dalasi. Lempo silangurgi di sukandeku ngi lige yokute reo mi. GRA moi bang has bunguri gambia sas ngi mu feye ku lepo lui lempo chibi reo mi. Betak na GRA di yegal fey kati lempo ine warugal la pur nyu fey lunyu nan withholding tax on contract payment. Ma nam bepa contract bu way joxe te ci biir rew mi lañu to kon xaalisi contract bi ngeen nangoto war nga ci wañi ci xayma témer bu nekka fuka bu féké né contract bi dekku ci biir rew mi bu boba di nga waro wañi témer bu nekka fuka ak jurom li moy lempo bu ñu nan withholding tax on contract payment li moy lempo bi nga xamné yow mi joxe contract waru gal la nga wol batté ku dem fey ko ci makaani GRA tax office bu la gëna jégué mbété ci banque yi GRA jagléel pour fey lempo war nga djebal lempo bi ci diri fuki fan ak jurom ganaw bi nga wagné ci xali ci contract bi amul ben contracto bu ñu téggel fey lempo bi xana mu fekk né nguri gambia ñoko djégalé bolé ci project yi nga xamné mbotay ndimbali ñokoy dépense gra di fey ku lempo ngir yok for the first time in the history of the gambia gambia printing publishing corporation proudly introduces the billiomatic exercise book printing machine the machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non-size restricted printing service supply across the sub-region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, 
reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsol's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator. Hello and welcome to this special interview. Um, if you've been following you, us, we told you we're going to bring you a special interview here on Kirfatu uh, to talk about the detention of uh, Mamadou Sabali. And to do that with me, I have his wife, Jay Sar Sabali. Jay, welcome to this special interview. Thank you for having me, Fatu. First of all, uh, we want to wish all of you a uh, Merry Christmas, uh, our followers uh, across the world. Uh, this is a time of forgiveness. This is a time of healing. This is a time of celebrations. Um, unfortunately, Jay, we're here talking about something that is very painful to your family. How did you spend the Christmas this morning? Um, well, Christmas at, at our household is normally a very special day because my mom is Catholic. Um, this year, however, it has been quite a sorrowful Christmas considering that Sabs is detained. So my Christmas morning was having to rush there to get him his breakfast. Now let's talk about um, Sabali. Um, I know before you come to this interview, you went to visit him. Sure. How is he? He's, he's fine. He's in okay spirits um, under the circumstances. As you know, he's always his self. Um, he's very calm. Um, of course, he feels like he was unfairly treated, so he's not happy about that. But in terms of physical condition and his spirit, he's in good spirits. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the circumstance itself. How did you know about his arrest? Um, well, I was just wrapping up at work when he himself called me and told me that um, the police were at the house and they had invited him for questioning. But while they were there, they got orders that they, they should just arrest him. So he was not inviting, but he, he was Yeah, he was arrested, yeah. He was arrested and taken to um, Kairaba station at first, where they waited for orders and then they transferred him to the PIU. And on Wednesday, mm -hmm. when you rushed to the PI, of course, right? Sure. Um, what was the reaction like when you got there? Were you allowed access to him directly at first? No, absolutely not. Um, we were there with a group of um, family and supporters and, uh, of course, UDP members um, till late night, but we were not granted access. Um, that day, he couldn't even eat. He, he wasn't given, allowed to um, receive his food, actually. So uh, later on, when we tried, once again, we were told that he was no longer there. So we didn't know where he was. We were frantic. We rushed to Banjul police station, and he wasn't there either. So we called it a night. Um, the following day... So we you went to bed that Wednesday night without having any access, knowing where he was? Yes, well, not knowing where he was, actually. Not able to give him any food? Yes, exactly. And how was that night? It was rough, but we had faith, <laughs> because that's one thing he has taught us over the years, that you have to have faith. And uh, so that's how we spent the night, just praying that he's okay. And when you wake up on Thursday morning, mm -hmm. what was what, what what did you do? How were you able to access him right away from on, on Thursday morning? Um, yeah, through his lawyer. Yeah, with the help of his lawyer, who was able to communicate with some authorities, we found out that he was back at the PIU. So the night before, he was actually transferred to um, the anti-crime unit or agency and then brought back to the PIU the next day. So I was able to give him his food there. 
at that point he wasn't allowed a change of clothes. So yes, we reported. I wanted to say yeah. that we reported. We our police source told us um, he was allowed his medication and food, but he was not allowed a change of clothing and um, some sanitary items, exactly. which we reported. Was that true? That is very true. <laughs> so it took a while before we could have access to that. So Did they give any reasons why? Because I do know if you are in detention, some of those things are, yeah. are mandatory. You are supposed to have access to those. Did you they should have. Yeah, by right you should have it. And, and we had to actually talk to people mm -hmm. um, all over. People have been really helpful and supportive and I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has really been moved by this story and has really done a bit of something to, to show the government of the Gambia that what they're doing is not right. Um, you cannot just hold somebody, detain somebody under the pretext of investigating him wanting to link him to an alleged coup, completely distracting the whole nation. Nobody is now talking about that coup, alleged coup. It's all about Sabali. Yeah. Um, and they really do want to link him. According to the court documents, they're investigating him for treason. Treason. This is crazy. <laughs> it's unbelievable how, how they could just link it based on a video of him talking to UDP TikTokers, who in their right mind we will stage a coup and publicly talk to youths of the party that you belong to about your plans. It doesn't make sense. Any rational human being will know that this is a bogus claim. I mean, talking about that, we also had, we saw the, the affidavit and the court documents that were presented to yeah. the judge to yeah. give them access to have extension of his detention. Yeah. Now, what legal minds will tell you the route we are saying is they want to charge him for treason. That is the interpretation that a lot of the lawyers that we spoke to are saying. Yeah. Treason, non bailable offense. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it doesn't, it, everybody just finds it completely crazy. And uh, yet, still, it is a government and the police that is meant to ensure law and order in this country that is pushing this agenda. It's really scary that we have gotten to this level as a country, using our legal instruments to detain a completely innocent man who was just exercising his right to political participation. That is the Gambia that we are living in today. Are you worried about his well-being? Um, Sabali, a lot of people say the UDP leader say is a thorn in the flesh sure. of the government. Yeah. He is the biggest critic of this government. He doesn't. He criticized the IGP openly. Mm -hmm. He criticized the government officials openly. Mm -hmm. Now today, his document is lying in the same IGP's office. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mean, I mean, this is Gambia, and a lot of people have had a lot of talks mm -hmm. coming from the IGP allegedly. Mm -hmm. And are you worried? How worried about are you uh, that he will be charged for treason? How worried are you? I I am worried because of the trend that it is currently taking. It is not looking promising because um, we expected them to detain him at most for, 27, for, for um, 72, 72 hours. hours. And they have gone through the courts and have extended this, yeah. I understand, up to the 5th of January. Yeah. Um, so already that is showing that these people are ill-intended. They don't have anything. They're not even at this point questioning him anymore about anything. So they're just putting this guy there and going about their business. So that trend is really worrying to me. But I would expect the IGP and any authority who is involved in this to act with, with, with professionalism. Yeah. This is not a personal vendetta issue. Deal with that outside of your job. These are people who are upholding public of offices. We yeah. expect them to act professionally. Yeah and not by fear or by favor. Just do the right thing. And they know in their hearts that if they're supposed to do the right thing, this man wouldn't, be, wouldn't even spend one more minute there. Yeah. So they're completely off target right now. They're not working as they should. I mean, a lot of people said, we have heard, I mean, we have had other political operatives say stuff like this. Lawyer Dabo have said it several times, mm -hmm. Ngabon Yeah. Um, he one time even said, I'll make the government ungovernable yeah. for them if they want to do certain things. Yeah. Rambo Jaka have said that this country, if you try to arrest Yajame, we will bring bloodshed. Exactly. What is that supposed to exactly. mean? But we haven't seen any of them being arrested. That is the fact. Now, why do you think Sabali was arrested for this statement? Well, 
really, I think they who, who set up this whole scheme will be the best persons to answer that question. Uh, he's a politician, he's a public figure, he's very outspoken. That is his approach to, to, to engaging politically. And um, he doesn't hold any prisoners when it comes to his political activities. He goes, f and that's him, in whatever he gets into, it, he does it full, fully. He doesn't do half-hearted things. This is him. So they should respect us as long as he's doing everything legally. I don't see why they should, they should really bother with him. Yeah. As you said, others have said worse. Yeah. So why him? He's being targeted unfairly. That's the bottom line, Fatu. As a family, um, do you feel, how do you feel? I said this yesterday and I, and I was talking to a friend, I said, I don't know how his wife and kids feel. I, I'm never in their situation, but this is a man who was banned for life, for never ever mm -hmm. to, uh, for never ever to take any government position no. ever in his entire life. Yeah. Mind you, he's educated, he's Call yeah. it whatever you want to call yeah. it. When he wanted to run for public office, they, they, they said, no, you will not run for mm -hmm. public office. Mm -hmm. You can never run. Even though we have thieves mm -hmm. who were called by the Jaina Commission, mm -hmm. we have people who the, the TRRC have said have killed people. They're mm -hmm. still in the system. Mm -hmm. the, when I spoke to the president myself, I interviewed him one time about certain people in his government. He said, Fatu, well, let's wait until after the TRRC or the Commission of Inquiry. Mm -hmm. But most of those people are still in government. Yeah. Somebody who served for the Jamis government, let's say for months yes months exactly. we, we not need to be clear about this yes when he served it was just for months sure and then he doesn't have somebody is not rich no we don't see the riches we don't see the cars we don't no. see the houses exactly but he's been banned for life yeah he was stopped from running for public office. Today he said something that a lot of people have said, mm -hmm. he's been arrested. Yeah. Now, how does one person take all of this? As the wife of this man, yeah. I know Sabali, I come from I mean, where he was, I know his family, I know mm -hmm. his mom. Mm -hmm. But as, a f as, as his wife, how do you take all of these okay. and just process it? Yeah. How does the family deal with all of this? I think you summed it up very well. That is the reality that we're dealing with. Um, it's the height of selective justice in this country. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, but like, that's how I felt um, if that was my husband, if that was my brother, if that was my, my partner. At some point, I felt like Sabali, everybody knows me and him, we had our issue. Um, but the thing is, mm -hmm. you know, there's just so much one person can take. Yeah. You know, from banning, you don't want me to work in government, fine. I want to go to election. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I want to go to election. I'm sorry sometimes when yeah. I, I promise myself I'm not going to be. Yeah, I wasn't supposed show. to be doing this. I don't <laughs> to want cry. to be yeah, yeah. on this show because, but mm -hmm. I think it's important we put these things out. Yeah. I said to myself, if that was my husband, if that was my boyfriend, if that was my brother, yeah. if that was my cousin, how much can one person take? And sometimes I tell people, mm -hmm. maybe we should look at why Savali is always on the offensive. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much he's dealing with. Mm -hmm. There is so much. Mm -hmm. You can never work. You are a master's degree holder. Yeah. You have all these capabilities, all these yeah. qualifications, yeah. all of this. No private government person even want to employ you because they feel like mm -hmm. the government will not want that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you want to run for public office yeah. and you know he was the most qualified person in that like, in, I would say it. Yeah. he was yeah. but he could not because yeah. the law had to stop him yeah. now he cannot even express himself yeah. again yeah. he had to go to jail for yeah. that yeah. how does any, anybody deal well, with that how I'm do not, you deal with that at home well, uh, I won't speak much about the ban because there is an appeal yeah. on that in court right now um, but for me personally and this is my view um, he was banned by a commission which constituted of people who had vested interest, who had conflict of interest to begin with. Yeah. Um, I think the foundation was wrong to yeah. begin with, yeah. not to mention the decision, but yeah. that I would leave to the to courts the court to, to be, deal be, with. Deal. Yeah, yeah um, I think Sabali is one person who has the strongest of spirits that I, I have ever met. Yeah. Um, he doesn't carry all these things to the house. No. If you can imagine that. Wow. He's the most loving father. He's a hands-on dad. 
every morning he has a routine with all of us. He gets water ready for the children to, to bath. He makes me my coffee. He's always on the prayer mat. He wakes up before all of us. Yeah. My two-year-old will join him on the prayer mat. They'll watch their cartoons together. Yeah. Um, he doesn't, he, he operates with energy. Mm. If you give him a negative vibe, he will just snub you. And that is what most people will, will interpret as arrogance. Yeah. Um, we live in a society where everybody wants people to act a certain way, to toe their line. And Saps is not made to do that. He's, he has his own way of doing things. I call him, I tease him, I say, you are eccentric. And Gambians should learn to embrace difference in people. Yeah. Everybody cannot be boring and meek. Yeah. Everybody cannot be sweet and nice. People have to be different. Sabs embodies the spirit of our current youth, the youth of our generation, the frustrations of the youth of our generation. Yeah. The sadness of parents who lost their kids to AKI. He is that voice. We should embrace it. Yeah. That's what he projects, it's the frustrations of our generation. Not all of us are able to express that. That's what he does. Uh, he works, he believes in what he believes in, and he should be led to operate. He's one of the most tolerant pe people. People don't know that about him. I don't agree with him most of the time when it comes to ideology, when it comes to politics. He doesn't question that, he doesn't, he, he actually, actually likes debate. Yeah. He respects people who are willing to debate on ideas. But people have judged him. I mean, he's not perfect. And he'll be the first to tell you that. But he's somebody who constantly learns yeah. and, and improves on himself. And that's his greatest strength. One of his greatest strengths, I would say. To those who say they still haven't forgiven him. I, you know, I, I, they had this argument this morning before coming to the show. Mm -hmm. um, I said to somebody, one thing a lot of the people, the people that hate Saps will tell you, oh, I mean to Jamela Taimo. But we have forgiven all the other people yeah. that have killed, exactly. that have stolen. Mm -hmm. But Saps made a statement that he apologized for. Yeah. We still haven't, we, we, some of us have still mm -hmm. holding on to it's, that. It's what people want to hold on to. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not making any ex excuses for him because um, he has said what he has to say about that issue. Yeah. Um, and I keep telling him he's not very good at defending himself. Yeah. Um, I was there that night and uh, this is the first time I'm saying that. And I remember when he came back from the GRTS or wherever it is where he, that statement was made. He normally doesn't talk to me. We're very good at separating our walks from house. Yeah. And uh, he, he said, I am really not happy mm -hmm. with what I had to do today. And that's where I will leave it at. So I can tell you that from the day that that was done, he had had regrets about it. But that's his burden to carry. Um, the fact that people don't like him, it's acceptable. You cannot like everybody. And he, he knows that. He knows that he's not everybody's cup of tea. But one thing that nobody can take away from him is the love he has for this country. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, to those who say, um, I, I said this to somebody, I said, I was worried about Jay and the kids because Saps have gone through worse than this. Yeah. Remember when he was paraded to walk from um, NIA, NIA to, to State in House, handcuffs. Yeah. Yeah. And he went to jail. He went through so much. Yeah public ridiculing and, and you know being mm -hmm. detained yeah i i said he could he, he could take care of he could he could handle this but it's the family i remember i don't know how true it is but i remember because i'm from lamen mm -hmm. i know the family i know sab's mother mm -hmm. Bakadi, how that woman was proud of him yeah that is his life everybody knows that that woman he works in the yeah. market everything that family talks about is Sabali, 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 <laughs> because he was the star of the family he was educated he was bold he would say anything and he's a pride for, for us Lamin, people from Lamin. Mm -hmm. but a lot of people believe the impact of his incarceration resulted to him the mom's sickness and eventually mm. she died sometimes the reason why it's important to bring this when you keep people mm -hmm. it's not what sabale is going through yeah. but it's what people outside yeah. are going through yeah. and how scared are you that you know this will affect your family especially mm. the kids well um like you said we've been through something like that this um that doesn't make this time any easier Mm -hmm. um, and uh, 
it's affecting us, um, but we try to be strong about it. We talk about it as a family. My older son, he's very good at trying to lighten the mood with us, making jokes, um, asking everybody how they're feeling. So we talk about it. We don't make it hush-hush. For the children who are able to understand, we try to explain things to them, at least I do. And, um, and we just hope it will make us stronger at the end of the day. We are not going to sit here because people have been through worse. Um, so we count our blessings every day. Um, we pray that the government will really think about what they're doing and stop immediately. When you say the government, do you think this is politically motivated? Exactly. It is. What else could it be, Fatu? Really? What else could it be? I mean, this man is innocent. This man is innocent. I know that this government has tried several times to get him to their camp. He doesn't want to go. So we have seen them punish people in ways that have really made them succumb and join their camp. Sabali is not one of those people. If he wanted to go, he'll go. In the future, if he feels like that's where he wants to go, he'll go. But he strongly believes that UDP is his place. So I don't see that changing. Um, I spoke to the lawyer earlier before this, and um, he is very confident that by Tuesday, they will charge him. And are you prepared for that? What are they going to charge him with? Treason. We don't know. <laughs> That's what... We don't know. We don't know. I, I cannot be prepared for that. Because they would be charging an innocent man of treason, of something he has no hand in. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. And this is not good for the country. People are angry. I know you've seen the political, the, the public opinion on this case. Um, it's not good. It doesn't tell well. It could be Sabali today, but if they succeed in silencing Sabali, which is what they want to do, because he's a critic of the government, then they could do it to anybody. I'm sure the president will look at this critically. If because what I'm, the reason why I'm saying this, government's ratings are looked based on this. Yeah. Um, how political opponents are treated. Sure. How and today what we are seeing is all over the world. UDP campaign manager is arrested. Sure. UDP campaign, campaign manager this yeah. and that. Yeah. And this government has made name for themselves recently yeah. when it comes to political tolerance. I mean, today we can sit here and talk mm. about all of these things and no one is coming to yeah. arrest us. Today you can say things on the radio and nobody is arresting mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. Now, but if stuff like this are coming yeah, out, yeah. it will dampen that, you know, that zeal already that is there, yeah. that the international community is watching. Yeah. And I think if I'm a politician, I'm going to let you be and say everything. Mm -hmm. Some of these things, maybe mm -hmm. people look at them as negative people and they will give you political points. Mm -hmm. But if everybody is looking at this as a political, then that makes it bad. Yeah, for the it's government. not good for the government. I don't know what they're thinking, honestly, but this is not a smart political move. I don't know what angle they're trying to take it, but it is not. And I don't know who is advising our president, but the president needs to open his eyes. I mean, you, he should be listening to oppositions because your own people will hardly tell you what you don't like to hear. Mm -hmm. And governments are suffering. This country, I mean, in the combos, people are depending on one meal a day in the combos now. You cannot keep saying it has to do with global economy. Do something about it. These are the issues that affect subs. He talks to youths yeah. at a personal level every day. He knows their issues. Youths are frustrated. They are trying all kinds of side hustles. They are still not able to make ends meet. Those are the frustrations that are reflected in his speeches. The president should learn to listen with an open mind. And then, and then I want to see that because he is a more of a motivational speaker. He is. And I tell him, I don't know how you do this. He is everywhere speaking to young people. Mm. He has this connection, this mm -hmm. special connection with the young people. And he always say it is the mindset that he wants to change. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is a problem? Him talking to the young people all the time. And a lot of them, people like the Bubas and and Jais and others, they believe, they believe in him. It's like uh, Talibi and Selin Singh with some of these people that he's very close to. Mm. Do you think that's the problem? That's why people see him as kind of a threat? Well, I, I don't see what's stopping them from also talking to the youth. Um, that's his passion. This is something he's studied over the years, how to motivate people. 
and he's, he, he's, he just has an affection for the young people. And you'll be surprised how much he learns from these young people as well. These are smart young people, dynamic young people in their own right. Mm -hmm. So it's an exchange that he loves. It's just a natural connection. I don't see what's wrong with that, that you should get to that level to charge somebody treason, Fatu. That's really wrong. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the other thing I want to say, after all, everything that happened, did he ever sit down and said, maybe I should just leave this country, go to America or go somewhere and, and just work and make my own money? Wouldn't that be the easiest for all of us, yeah. including myself? Um, and I think at some level, maybe some of his um, detractors, that's what they want. But that's he's never mentioned that he's not that's not his intention at all i mean he like you said he's been through worse and he has stayed i don't see him i don't think i can convince him this is something that he strongly believes in and i respect him for that i mean why can't we live and let others live this is our gambia nobody owns it but us mm. i saw a post early before i came mm. somebody said well, he always say, can't cage me, can't cage mm -hmm. me. But today he's caged. <laughs> Do they understand the meaning of what he said when he says can't cage yeah. me? Because I take it to be... It's beyond can, the physical. It's beyond the physical, yeah. right? Yeah. What's your take on some people who are saying, oh yes, he's been caged? <laughs> well, it just shows their level of understanding, their level of thinking and their intentions for, a, for him. Of course, he wouldn't want to be in that position, be detained physically, but caging him is beyond the physical for him. It's about ment his mental state, his ability to speak, which is exactly what the government is trying to do now, to stop his ability to speak. That is what he refuses. That is what he refuses. Now, I, a lot of movements are going on, mm -hmm. people are free family movement and all this, a lot of people are so, uh, showing their solidarity. Yeah. Um, you know, he, even his biggest people that he doesn't see eye to mm -hmm. eye with, mm -hmm. some of them have released up to two or three statements. Yeah. Because a lot of people, and the reason why I keep saying this, and I, I said it to somebody that, uh, right before mm -hmm. I came, mm -hmm. this is not just family, if this works. Yeah. All of us that have a microphone, yeah. all of us that are in speaking yep. are going to be in trouble. Big time. Free speech is going to be in trouble. Yeah. Yes, there should be responsibility when we speak, mm -hmm. but we should not also be scared to yeah. speak. Yeah. And if that happens, to those people who think this is about Sabali, what is your message? Well, it just shows how limited they are in their thinking. I don't think I have a message for those people, actually. For me, I, my message is for the government. Let them do the right thing. Let them not take us back to dictatorship. The president, Adam Abaro, was part of those who pushed for this kind of government, this open space. So what happened now? What has gone wrong with him that he wants to take us back to dictatorship? It's not going to be allowed. People will not allow it because, I mean, it doesn't help anybody, like you said. If it's him today, it will be all of us tomorrow. And that's a problem. What he said about taking over the nation has nothing to do with a coup d'etat. It doesn't make sense. Like you said, so many people have said it. People are right now on social media saying the same thing, repeating his words. Yeah. Are they going to go and arrest all Everybody. of them? I mean, and then just to take a short piece out of a long speech, take it out of context, and use that to charge somebody for treason in this day and age. What that does is it really trivializes the, the charge of treason or the way we practice our law in this country. Yeah. So when we have a real case of treason, you think um, citizens or even the international community will respect our decision or our claims that we, th this is a charge of treason. We are watering down our own legal systems. So this is beyond Sabali. And I wish everybody would know. And finally, my question <coughs> is a lot of people, because um, I don't see um, how the treason charge could come up with mm -hmm. unless Sabali has a link with the alleged coup mm -hmm. protest. Yeah. Do you know any, of, <laughs> any link that he has ever had with any of those people that are being held right now? Never. I, I have never heard of their names. And um, I, don't, I, I don't think he's never mentioned them. I've never heard of them. He doesn't know them. I mean. This is just a far-fetched link that some people who really don't like him are trying to make a link out of. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Well, finally, your message to the, all the Gambians who are showing solidarity to your family. Mm -hmm. 
just to say thank you and uh, this is a mes message from Sabali himself. What did he say when you told him? Did he tell you you were going to have an interview with him? <laughs> yes, he just laughed. <laughs> <laughs> so he said he wished me good luck. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, um, just to say a big thank you. We really appreciate all the support, all the love that is being um, showered on him and uh, we pray that the outcome is positive for all of us. Thank you. thank you very much, Jay. I want to thank you for making time to talk to us, even though I know what your family is going through. Mm -hmm. And we want to uh, wish you all the best. Thank um, you. For me, I have said this publicly, Sabal is my brother from Lamin. I know the family, uh, their mom, all the sisters, mm -hmm. the, the, his uh, Ami and others. Yeah. You know, I yeah. know everybody in sure. the home. Sure. He is one of us, and yeah. we are very proud of who he is. Thank you. And we are also in solidarity with him because um, if he did otherwise, we are going to say it. Thank you. When when we had issues, mm -hmm. when we believed that he was wrong, yeah. we have said it. Yeah. And we have written about it. Yeah. When we believe he's right, we mm -hmm. are going to say, you are right. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any reason why anybody should be silent about this, mm -hmm. because this is more than Sabali. Mm -hmm. Just Indeed. like Dabo said yesterday, this is more than Sabali. Indeed. This is about all of us who have a voice, who yeah. are saying things. And I, it's important to put that on record. And we want to wish you all the best. Um, to wish ourselves all the sure. best as well. Thank because you, Because he is family. Thank you. And I thank appreciate you very that. much. And to the rest of you, um, follow us for updates as to what happens in this case. Um, thank you very much. And Merry Christmas once again. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. And stronger as the sole ground operator at the Banjul International Airport. With an expansion in travel services, customers are assured of GIA's capacity to cater for all their travel needs provided by professional experienced and ever smiling staff. GIA's Hajj package and services by far the best in the country give the customers the opportunity for a memorable Hajj experience. For a more efficient cargo services, GIA means business as it launches its new multi-million dollar ultra-modern cargo complex to revitalize and stimulate air transport. GIA, the pride of the Gambia. Every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets with a liberal air transportation policy. That daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily.